Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to be ranking every single eyeshadow palette in my collection. Now, a couple of days ago, I did an eyeshadow palette collection tour. I can link that below in the description box. There are going to be a few differences in this video because I actually filmed that one several weeks ago. I've been pre-filming because I'm going to be having a baby in a couple months and I'm trying to get ahead of myself. So I filmed the eyeshadow palette collection tour several weeks ago and I'm not in this video mentioning anything that has been listed for sale has sold or anything that's new to my collection because I'll be doing a holiday haul video in the new year. This is now just whatever is currently in my collection minus new things. And if you guys happen to notice any differences, well, good as you for paying attention. I also did want to say that I'm not going to be ranking this palette, which was a custom palette built by my sister for my birthday because it's just got sentimental value and I don't feel like it would be right to rank it. And I'm also not going to be ranking the Adept Plain Jane palette. This is the original, not the remastered. This palette is all shimmers and multi-chromes and I don't feel right comparing it to other palettes that may be standalone or have a lot of matte shades in them because they're just totally different formulas. They serve totally different purposes. It felt wrong to rank it when every other palette in my collection has both shimmers and mattes. So I just wanted to mention that before we got going. If you are new here, never been here before, hello, my name is Rachel. I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I love to play with colorful eyeshadow. I did film today's look. I'll link this in the description box as well. And I upload multiple videos every week. It's all eyeshadow related content. So if you like what you see and you want to see more, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing before you leave. I've got lots more fun content for the rest of the year and I have new stuff coming. Definitely filming well into January and February at this point. Without further ado, let's get going with this video. I think I have 34 palettes to mention today. I'm gonna to start at the bottom and work my way to the top and I will put the number on the screen so that I don't confuse myself. I also am going to be considering the palette size, the color story, the performance, the formula, all those things come into consideration when I'm ranking and I do wanna mention, this is just my personal opinion. If you love something that I have at the bottom, it's okay, we can disagree. It's just personal preference and right now, this is how I'm ranking things. It might change by the time I upload this video. If I were to rank these palettes again in three months, my, my positions might be different because it might depend on what I'm feeling or what color I'm in the mood for lately. Maybe I'm loving greens now and in three months I'm loving blues. And so that could change where these palettes would fall. But right now, this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna start at the very bottom with the Limoncello palette from ColourPop. Now, there is nothing wrong with this palette. The only reason it's ranked low lowest <laughs> is because it's very neutral and I just don't tend towards neutrals. I adore this packaging. I love it so much. I know I it's really good quality. It performs very well. This is kind of my staple neutral palette. When I want the brown tones, it's a really nice palette. The only reason it's low is because it's neutral and I have lots of really beautiful, fun, colorful palettes that make me more excited than a simple neutral palette, but it is a good one. Also, before I forget, if I'm able to, I'm gonna link these palettes below in the description box. And if they are discontinued, instead of having a separate line item, I'll just make a, a paragraph of these items are discontinued, but check Poshmark and Mercari because you can often find discontinued or retired palettes on the secondhand apps for really reasonable prices. Next in the lineup is High Tide from ColourPop. Great monochromatic teal palette. The reason it's so low is because it's monochromatic, but it is very good quality and the color story, even though it's just one color, there's a decent variety of lights to darks. The shimmers are really pretty. The mattes perform well. It's a good, it's a good staple palette. Mint to be is slightly higher than high tide simply because of color preference. I just tend towards lighter tones in general when I want to use these kinds of colors. I know mint is a light color anyway. Um, this is fun to pair with the high tide palette. I had two shades break on me, so this one is in my collection until it dies. It's not going to get sold, but I only put it a little bit higher because I prefer a mintier look over a teal look. It depends on what I'm doing, but generally this would be slightly higher. I swear, I have been adjusting this necklace all day. It just wants to move. I don't know why. Isn't that annoying? Necklaces, they just work their way around your neck. So irritating. Okay, here's the Mimosa palette from BH Cosmetics. Mimosa is part of their brunch series. It was released when they were really, had really figured out their formula and it's excellent quality. I have this one lower because there are just tons of pinks. I find that pink is one of my least used eyeshadow colors, so it doesn't get a lot of use, but also I think that this palette could have either been pared down or had some other variety brought in like some red tones or a couple different oranges. It's pretty, it's just a little unexciting. And here's the Summer and Saint Tropez palette. This is new to my collection. I've used it twice, I think. 
This one is a little higher than Mimosa because although it does have the pinks, it also has more berry tones, which I personally prefer. There's more variety within the shimmers and the mattes. And I think that the color story itself is just overall a little more interesting. It's a little bit more versatile. You can do more with it, get a couple more looks. I wish it had some depth. I wish it had a really dark brown or maybe even a black shade to deepen out all of these colors because this is the darkest shade and it it's really more of a medium tone shade. So I just wish this one had some more depth to it. Here's the Naughty palette from BH Cosmetics. This is pretty new to my collection. I am currently filming a week of Naughty palette where I do an entire week of uploads using just one palette and doing the week of Naughty. That's gonna go live in January. So you guys will see that pretty soon. But this is the Naughty palette. I have this one ranked where it is because it's a little bit too big for my personal preferences and it's a little bit too neutral, although it's not terribly neutral. You know, we've got some neutral tones here and here. Aside from that, it's pretty colorful. I find that this palette is a strange blend of interesting and uninspiring. I do like it, and every time I use it, I'm genuinely impressed by the quality. This is good BH Cosmetics quality. There's just something about it that doesn't get me really excited, but it is good quality, and I'm having fun filming the week of video series, so make sure you keep an eye out for that because I'll have at least four looks uploading in one week using this palette. Here's the BH Cosmetics Orange Sorbet. This is from their Sweet Shop series. Again, excellent quality. This is kind of a favorite in my collection just because I found that I love to play with orange eyeshadow and this is a good assortment of orange eyeshadow. Lots of very good quality. I wish there was a little bit more variety in the shades and that there was more depth as well. I understand it's a monochromatic palette. There's only so much you can really do. And I wish that the pan sizes were a bit smaller because I'm never gonna hit pan in a, in a pan that's this big. They're, they're just huge, but it's a really good palette. Here's the Orchid You Not palette from ColourPop. I have rated this one higher than the Wine and Only because personally, I love the more true purple berry tones as opposed to the more burgundy tones that are red based. I think that these are more flattering on my skin tone and I just like them better. This palette also has an inner corner highlight. It goes a little bit lighter and it goes super deep and it's very good quality. So this is a good palette. I like this one. Here's the Festival palette by Juvia's Place. I tried Juvia's Place for the first time this year and overall I've had a lot of fun with them. This palette I find to be kind of an exciting color story and rather unexpected. I mean, you can expect the orangey, reddy, yellow tones, but then there's this pink and a blue and it's like, oh, okay, what am I gonna do with that? It's just interesting enough to challenge you and push you a little bit and I do really enjoy that. I'm having fun, especially with the mattes from Juvia's Place. The shimmers are okay, they're not super impressive, but the mattes are really good. Here now is the Still Pretty palette from September Rose Cosmetics, my first palette from the brand, and I do like this one. I know I said that pink was one of my least used eyeshadow colors, but I think that this palette is a very good mix of pinks and reds and purples, and then a few neutrals. You've got more of an orangey matte over here, and then sort of a gold shimmer, and there's the white. So yes, it has some pink, but it also has complementary colors, and it does go pretty deep. So I just think that this is a more fun and interesting palette than Mimosa. In fact, I might just keep this and get rid of Mimosa at some point if I find that I'm using one over the other. There's no reason to have two. I try to keep my, my collection pretty curated so that I don't feel overwhelmed by my hobby. This is just, I, I don't know, this is a good palette and I like it. Let's talk about Michaela from Glam Light. This is their first collaboration with Michaela. I do like this palette. Again, it's a smidge too large for my personal preferences. And I think that it's a little bit too purple heavy. I do wish that they had pared it down or brought in some other color variety. I know that when you're collabing with a brand, you might just be given an empty palette and say, fill it with shades. So there might not be a lot of choice as far as how big, how many pans your palette includes. And so, if that's the case, then that's fine, but we could have brought in some other tones besides six or seven purples. Also, all these neutrals are quite warm toned. One of my subscribers pointed this out to me. These are all warm toned neutrals, and then these are all kind of cool toned colors. And I didn't notice that at first, but now looking at it, I can't unsee it. I think the palette's pretty. I do really like Glam Light's formula, but this is a little bit lower on the spectrum today simply because I, I wish it had a little more variety or were smaller or both. And now here is the Melt Amor y Mariposas palette. I believe this was a Christmas launch 2020? One? Don't know. Anyway, I think this palette's beautiful. I know Melt recently has gotten some flack because mm, their color stories are not as exciting as people are hoping for. They seem to be falling a little bit behind, but I think that this palette's really good. I wish that these two shades were not so close. Aside from that, it's a beautiful color story. I do really like the shimmers in here. The mattes perform beautifully. It's a pretty dark palette. 
but I think that it's a lovely and very sultry sort of color story, but you do have these pops of brightness as well. So it's just a fun mix of the two. I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys. I tend to talk fast anyway, and I film my videos when my kids are upstairs doing homework or napping or whatever. Right now my toddler's napping. So this is kind of a get the video done and then make lunch for the family sort of thing. <laughs> this is the Alice in Wonderland palette collaboration with Sigma. I do like this color story. I think that this is by far the most interesting color story that Sigma has launched yet. It's very pretty, it's very whimsical, fun, interesting. It's the first time I tried Sigma as a brand and I was really impressed by the mattes especially. They were a bit more verse, uh, not versatile, but they moved around on the lid more than I was expecting and certainly more than several other brands that are in my collection, but that doesn't mean they're bad. It's just a different formula and you have to work with them a little differently. It was really pretty and I like the looks I've gotten from it. These shimmers are a bit more traditional or standard. They're probably very flattering on aging skin. So as I get older, <laughs> this one might become higher and higher in my ranking because I don't want something that's quite as emollient or reflective because it's gonna start showing some fine lines and stuff. I don't know if I'll care about that. I don't know if I'll even be doing eyeshadow shadow at that point in my life. But anyway, this is a good palette and I do like it. Here we have another ColourPop palette. This is Through My Eyes between ColourPop and I Love Sarahi. I think that this is a really interesting color story. I really like the weird mix of neutral, bronze, purpley, teal kinds of shades. I just think it's weird and interesting and it's inspiring when you look at it because because there are so many different shadows and colors, you're like, ooh, what can I do with that? And there's almost no way to get a boring look out of it. I, I just think it's pretty. I think it's a good palette and the quality is nice. I do like ColourPop overall. I think the shimmers are pretty. They're not amazing, but they are good shimmers. I like the palette. Now we've got a palette that I used on my eyes today. Again, this eye look is linked below in the description box. This is The Child between ColourPop and Mandalorian Star Wars. It's Star Wars The Mandalorian. This was the first of four palettes that ColourPop to date has launched with the Star Wars franchise. This is my favorite still. I think this, co this color story is perfect. I love that it's soft, neutral, muted greens, but it's done in both a warm and a cool tone version. I think it's very well done. I love the packaging. I think Baby Yoda is so cute. I love the details and it's sort of a soft touch package. It's just great. And even though this shade has broken on me, I still, I just really enjoy this palette. I think it's very well done. There's a nice range of colors and depths and formulas. It's solid. Now we've got the Oceanic palette from Ace Beauté. This is their old formula, but I like it anyway. I think this is a perfectly done blue and green color story, perfectly balanced. It's a nice arrangement of shades, tones, and depths within just blue and green. It performs pretty well. Yes, it's the old formula. I've heard that the new is much, much, much better. I kind of totally definitely want the Aura palette that they have just released, but that's limited edition, significantly more money, and it would replace this one completely, but with a better formula. I don't know, maybe I'll get my hands on it at some point, but for now, this is the Oceanic palette and it is very pretty. Here we have a collaboration between ColourPop and Tinkerbell. This palette is called Sprinkle a Little Magic. This palette's really good. I think that this palette's well done. It's one of the first times that they launched the larger pans, but not as large as the Sweet Shop from BH Cosmetics. I've had a couple shades break on me, of course, because they hate me, but the color story is really good. I really enjoy the mix of greens and pink tones. I do wish that these two shades were not quite so similar. I wish we had more of a mid-toned berry matte. And this, this shade was actually one of my favorite shimmer in the palette and it broke on me, but it's a good palette. The quality is very good. It is ColourPop's really good formula and it's got a nice mirror. The packaging's spot on. They did a good job with this collab. Slightly higher than that is the Lush Life palette. I ranked this one slightly higher because this one has a couple more color options. And again, really good quality, really good formula. I think this palette is surprisingly versatile. And although I haven't used it much recently, I still just can't bring myself to get rid of it because not only is it one of the first palettes where I was really diving into color and I was like, that palette will challenge me, but I just think the color story is kind of unbeatable. It's really creative. It's a creative color story. It's unique. It's different. I haven't found anything quite like it. I enjoy the size. I enjoy that it's not too big. It's got light and depth and a, it's just good. It's a good palette. Uden's Eye is now making an appearance on my list. Uden's Eye is ranking pretty high overall because it's one of my favorite brands. This is the Cat's Breath from their Saga of Freya collection. I believe they launched three palettes in this collection. There was Cat's Breath, there was Cat with the Golden Carriage, which was more pinky, mauvey tones, and then there was another one, Amber Tears, 
which I think was a two-sided palette. I don't know. They all had this book format. Saga Freya Cat's Breath was my favorite. I think this color story is so cool. I really, really enjoy this color story. Again, we have light and dark. We have some variety in tone. Yeah, the color that jumps out at you first is this orange. Then you pair it with blue and peach and you're like, oh, okay. Or you pair it with teal and it's a little bit of a surprise. And there's a brown shade to deepen and four different shimmers. The quality is very good. It's definitely my favorite from the Saga Freya collection. I didn't buy the others because this one stood out to me and the others didn't. Now we've got Pistachio Back to BH Cosmetics. This was also part of the Sweet Shop series, and I think that this one is a little bit better than Orange Sorbet simply because it has more range of depth. We go light to dark. That alone is enough to make me prefer a palette. The same thing corresponds to the shimmers, light to dark shimmers, not just mattes. I prefer mattes over shimmers, but these colors are just so lovely. Cool toned, warm toned, this is a great palette. This is a new palette in my collection, which I just told you guys about. This is the Midnight Palette from Beauty Bay, and I I think that this is a very good palette for me and my preferences. I usually stay away from very dark blue and purple shadows because they make me look tired. I've said this a billion times. If you know, you can write in the comments like, Rachel, we know, stop saying it. But this palette offers a good assortment of light and mid-toned purples and blues. And then the shimmers are also light to mid-toned. There are no black-based shimmers in here, which is good because I wouldn't really use them. And then we do have a black matte, a silver matte, and we've got these shades right here, which are very pretty inner corner highlights. So for my personal preferences within a color story that I love, I think this palette hits the mark and it's good quality. I very much enjoy Beauty Bay's quality. They do an awesome job with their dark mattes, which some companies struggle with, especially in the more difficult colors to formulate like blue and purple. So this is a good one. Slightly higher than that is the BH Cosmetics Blueberry Muffin, also from the brunch series, just like Mimosa. This one's just a little bit higher because some of the shimmers are a little bit lighter and more interesting, and there's a little bit more variety in the color story. It's not just two colors. I would say that this palette is not ranked higher simply because there's not as much variety in the shimmers as I personally would prefer. I wish they brought in some more purpley toned mattes and shimmers instead of this one and this one and this one because they're all pretty this pretty close and then these two right here yes this one's more white yes this one's more silver but again pretty close i wish there was a little bit more variety in the shimmers of this palette that would have kicked it up a bit for sure surprisingly play it jewel from ColourPop is a little bit higher it's a little higher than i thought it would be i will say i have customized this palette i took out some of the neutrals and i added in some shadows from a different ColourPop palette that i liked but kept forgetting about so this is slightly customized i'll bring up a picture of the original so you can compare them But this is a good palette. I like this one because even though it's bigger than I like overall, it does have a very pretty assortment of colors. You can get a ton of looks from this because it's larger. Unlike the Michaela palette, it doesn't have two rows of neutrals. And even if it did, they're spaced out a bit so you can't see them. But I like the color assortment. Most of these are light toned, but we do have some deepening shades as well. And the shimmers are really pretty. I like ColourPop shimmers generally. I think that this is a nice, palette overall. It's not my favorite, but it's pretty good, and it's currently the only mega palette I own from ColourPop. Now we've got Passion in Paris from BH Cosmetics. This is a good palette. I like this one because it goes pretty deep. It's got a decent variety of colors as well. Blues, silvers, whites, neutrals, purples, reds. It's got a little bit more variety than some of the other palettes in this size. Despite the fact that it does tend a little bit darker, I don't feel like I need to grab a lighter tone palette to pair with this one because it does have the lighter tones. You can grab some of these neutral tones, you can grab more of these mid-range shades right here, and it has light shimmers for inner corner highlights. It's a pretty well-balanced palette in really good formula. Now we have the Solmone 2 eyeshadow palette from Uden's Eye. This was released this year, and Again, Udensa is one of my favorite brands, so you're going to see several more palettes coming from them. This is a very nice palette. The colors are beautiful. Nothing's too dark, but we do have three good deepening shades. You can smoke out a look if you want to, but the shimmers especially are not too dark, and there's a good arrangement and assortment of mid-toned and light mattes and shimmers. This is the other palette that I used for today's eye look, and it's really pretty. I think that it's got a good range, considering it's a little bit of a smaller size. There's a really decent assortment of colors in here. Teal, blues, pinks, purples, orangey, browns. It's nice, it's a really good palette. It's just very solid, and the packaging is beautiful, of course. Just above that one, I've put the Hummingbird palette between Uden's Eye and Tina from the Fancy Face. For me, this palette is sort of a special shades because it's a little more shimmer heavy than mattes. The mattes are really pretty. The mattes are really pretty, but every time I think about this palette, I remember the shimmers and I wanna go and 
grab the shimmers just to complement something else. I think the shimmers are beautiful. They're so rich and saturated. This is such a vibrant palette. I love the colors that it brings. It's just super pretty and it's an interesting color story. So you can get some kind of cool looks from it even, even if you don't dip into anything else. We're getting closer to the top here, another Udensai palette. This is Norns. If you guys don't know, I did an entire week of uploads using only the Norns palette. It is in my week of playlist, which I can card above or link down below something. You'll find it. A whole week of Norns looks. And I had actually listed this palette for sale. I was going to get rid of it. And then I did a week of with it and I was like, oh no. This is really good. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long to get into it, just to really dig into it and force myself to use almost every shade in the palette, but I had a lot of fun. I found some new favorites. This whole bottom row I knew was special, but I hadn't played with it in too long. And I had a great time playing with this palette and forcing and making myself do different things. I came up with four beautiful looks. If you want to see them, check out the playlist. And yeah, Norns is, is much higher than I ever expected it would be because when I first used it, I was like, ah, and then I didn't touch it for months and months. So serves me right for delaying, right? This is the Dirty Martini from Glam White. Again, I really do enjoy the Glam White formula. This was part of their Happy Hour series. I grabbed only this palette because I have found that I love green eyeshadow. Now this is not truly monochromatic because we've got a few blues and a few more neutral or bronze metallic sorts of tones, but it's my favorite green palette. If we're talking about green palettes, to me this counts as a green palette, predominantly green. It's beautiful. The formula is beautiful. The quality is excellent. The shimmers are like a dream. This is my favorite shade right here. I need to go into this palette and use the blues because I never use them. I'm always into this one for the greens, but I love to play with green eyeshadow. It is so much fun. And this is excellent quality. I think we're at spot number six. We're almost there, guys. This is the Queen Bee palette from Colored Rain. Quite a new addition to my collection. I think the packaging is amazing. It is so cute inside and outside. If I can get this leave off, really good packaging. They just nailed it. However, the colors on the inside are phenomenal. This is such excellent quality. Excellent quality. The mattes are, they're truly amazing. They're so good. And then these two shimmers, this one is beautiful. It's just beautiful. But this one is stunning. It's like, oh, it's just multi-chrome goodness. It's see you from space. It's so impactful and such a powerful shimmer. It's more of the emollient sort of thing that you might find from, um, I, I think, from what I've seen, no personal experience here, but Sugar Drizzle, Laminatrix, brands like that that are putting out the really specialty indie shimmers, that's kind of what this one reminds me of. It's so beautiful, such a good palette. All right, top five. I want to mention the ColourPop X Raw Beauty Christie at Forest Sight palette. I worked to get this palette and I stayed up late to negotiate with the seller on Poshmark and I finally got it and I think the palette's beautiful. I adore the packaging because I do watercolor painting and this just speaks to my heart. The colors, the tones, the theme, it's beautifully done. It's downplayed. It's not bright and vibrant in your face. The colors are beautiful. They're truly natural colors. You can find these shades in nature. I like that it's more matte heavy, but we do have two shimmers in warm or cooler tones that work with every other shade in the palette. Seriously, every shade in this palette works with any other shade. And that's kind of a hard thing to do. That's really pretty impressive that you're going to come up with something that's really nice. I'm so happy I have this palette. Just a little bit higher than that, I placed the Flare palette from Ace Beauté. I have maintained that this is one of my favorite palettes in my collection. I think that this color story is just really cool. It's pretty autumnal, pretty harvesty, right? But then randomly we have a sky or Caribbean blue. And then we've got some unexpected purple tones over here. And this one is kind of gray based lavender. And then weirdly enough, there's this acid yellow green. Like what is that doing in there? But it works. It works so well. Not only does this color look really cool with most of the other colors in the palette, but you could also just put it on as an inner corner highlight and get a really ooh pop sort of effect, you know? Great palette. This is the old formula. I don't even care. I love it. Now we're in the top three. Top three. This, I would say, is not my favorite green palette, but it is a very green heavy palette. This is the Hella palette between Udenzai and Angelica Nyqvist. Angelica is my favorite YouTuber. I think she's intelligent, creative, fun to watch. I like her personality. I love to watch her eye looks. I've learned so much from her channel. You gotta check out Angie if you don't know. Of course you know. Who doesn't know Angie? Anyway, if, if you're watching me, you've watched Angie. <laughs> 
here is the Hella palette. It is now discontinued, but this is such a beautiful color story. Such a beautiful color story. It speaks to my soul. There are about two shades in here that I, I almost never use because they're not great on my skin tones, which are blue based, but it's this shade here and this shade here. I, I don't really use those, but aside from them, I use every shade in the palette. I think every shade in the palette is beautiful. It makes sense. The palette goes light to dark. We've got shimmers, we've got mattes. None of the shimmers are too dark. This one here, I say all the time, can be used as a wonderful face highlighter or a brow highlight or an inner corner highlight. The palette is versatile. It has a very pretty color story. We've got the pinks and purples, but then this shimmer is sort of a peachy pink. And then we've got the greens and browns, sure, but then this green right here is almost a yellow lime. I don't know. And then this one over here is sort of a brown purple shimmer. This here is a black matte with a bunch of sparkle in it. It's a beautiful palette, beautifully done. I know that Angie and Udens, I put a lot of time and effort into making this well-balanced and attractive to many people, and they absolutely succeeded. In the number two spot, you have to let me know in the comments. Have you guys been guessing? Are you surprised by any of these positions? What do you think my like top five or top three were? Because when I watch ranking videos, if they're by a creator that I'm really familiar with, I'll sit there sort of thinking ahead. I'm like, oh, I'll bet they put such and such in the top three. And I'll have conversations with a friend of mine. Um, one of my subscribers will chat on Instagram and be like, yeah, no, I watched so-and-so's video and I knew that that palette was gonna be top five. <laughs> so please let me know in the comments if you do that with ranking videos. And if you've done it with this ranking video, do you know what my top palettes are? What do you think? Number two. Wilderness from Beauty Bay. I got this palette on a restock and I'm so glad I did. This palette is awesome. Not only is it really good Beauty Bay quality, but the color story is just so varied and pretty. It's just pretty. It is very earthy. I think Wilderness is a good theme for the shades that are brought to us in this palette. And yet it's not neutral. It's, it's not a neutral palette. I mean, we've got orange and yellow and red and green and brown and blue and mint and teal. It's not neutral. It's quite a colorful palette, but they're all very earthy, grounded shades. I think the shimmers are beautiful. None of them are too dark for my, my tastes or preferences. You could also get a beautiful all matte look. You can combine warm and cool tones. I think the palette is executed beautifully in every way. And finally, spot number one, sorry guys, it's discontinued. Is anyone surprised by what this palette's gonna be? It's the Merry Christmas palette from Uden's Eye, part of their 2022 holiday launch. Amazing, beautiful, fascinating palette. Look at the colors in here, just look at the colors. They're so cool, they're so unexpected. It's just unexpected. I wouldn't have paired most of these colors together. And yet when Uden's Eye did it, it just made complete sense. And this palette's super inspiring to me, by the way. I also have an entire week of uploads using only this palette. So if you wanna see those, check out that week of playlist because there are, I think, four looks using this palette in the week of. I also have an Uden's Eye playlist and that one has a couple more looks using this palette, which were not part of the week of. Anyway, it's fully inspiring. There's not a single dud shade. On my skin tone, there's not a single shade that doesn't work or that looks bad. Even this weird one up here, this sort of chartreuse puke green kind of color, I don't know, it still works. It's not perhaps the most flattering color on me, but it's clo it works enough that I don't avoid it. I think it's amazing. This palette is so much fun to just play with by itself but also so much fun to pair with other things because you just grab any other palette in your collection and mix it with the Merry Christmas palette and you're gonna get this unique, exciting look. It's excellent quality. The packaging is spot on, of course. I didn't try to get its sister, the Christmas Eve palette, because I thought that that one, although beautiful, I could probably get close enough with other colors and palettes in my collection, but I knew that this one was special and I'm so glad I got my hands on it because there's a lot of FOMO about this guy. There's a lot. I'm sorry if you didn't get your hands on it. If you are at some point able to grab this palette for a reasonable price, I absolutely recommend it. It's fabulous. And there you go, my friends. That is my 2022 palette ranking video. I don't think I missed any I don't know. I don't think I missed any, but I had so much fun. It, it is so much fun to go through my collection and figure out where I place things. It's also something that I, I kind of do regularly. It's not a ranking video, but I certainly go through my collection and I think, you know, I haven't used this palette or I don't like this brand anymore, or I find this color story can be done better in this palette. So I, I, I do get rid of things pretty regularly and I try to keep my collection manageable so that it doesn't make me feel um, hemmed in, but I had so much fun 
ranking my palettes and figuring out where things lie and looking at every single one and touching every one and going, ooh, I could put this one with this one and make something pretty. So I hope you enjoyed the video. This is one of my last videos for the year. I've got a couple more, but hope you guys have been enjoying my content. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you again probably tomorrow, I don't know, really soon <laughs> with another video. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.